What's up, people? You know, I always got to do my, my pose for my thumbnails. Zevia, baby. As you know, I normally don't do two videos two days in a row. But yesterday, I had a lot of guys, a lot of guys, write me either email messages or Facebook inbox messages asking me my opinion on the whole situation involving another dating coach named Justin Wayne. Justin Wayne. And I'll put the video in the comment section below. I'll put the video in the comment section below. And I'll also put in some of my long-term followers. No, I actually interviewed Justin Wayne twice on my blog talk radio show, Up Front and Straightforward. I interviewed him twice. Matter of fact, the main reason I interviewed him on my blog talk radio show was because at that time he found himself in the middle of controversy. And evidently he's he's in the midst of controversy yet again. Now I normally don't do videos commenting on other dating coaches' problems, issues, controversies, etc. Normally my attitude is their problems are their problems and ain't got shit to do with me. But the reason I'm I'm discussing this, other than the fact that I got so many uh, like I said, emails and inbox messages related to it is because ever since probably roughly 2009, 2010, I've had a lot of guys on message boards and discussion forums ask me, hey, Alan, how come you never do infield videos? Most pickup artists do at least a handful of infield videos. I've never seen you do an infield video. Now you know why. Here's, here's been my response for years. And I will say I can't speak for other countries. I can only speak for the United States. Now, most of you do know or should know, before I became a dating coach, I was pursuing a career in the entertainment industry as a filmmaker and a screenwriter. So I know everything there is to know about media in general and entertainment industry in general. I may, I've done short films, at least two short films. So I know about filmmaking. Here's the deal, man. A lot of those infield videos you guys see produced by the uh, pickup artists, seduction girls, and dating coaches, number one, a lot of them are fake. Okay? I hate, to, I hate to burst your bubble. I hate to disappoint you. But a lot of those motherfuckers are fake. They fake as hell. I'll start with the fake ones. Man, here's how fake they are. You guys, some of you guys are familiar with Steve Dean Williams. He's another dating coach. Years ago, he was part of this Yahoo group that was full of pickup artists and seduction gurus and that type of thing. I'm going to say it was about maybe eight to ten of them in this group. And he wrote me one time. He said, Alan, man, you got to see this. Alan, you got to see this. This is going to blow your mind. You got to see this. I said, what? He said, I'm going to give you my login and password, and I want you to see this shit, man, because it's going to blow your mind. So I go into this group using Steve Dean Williams' login and password. And this very well-known pickup artist, I'm not going to say the guy's name. I ain't going to call him out. But he, he was... Pretty well known. He was showing other pickup artists how to create a fake infield video. And the purpose of infield videos is for a uh, pickup artist or a dating coach or a seduction guru or whatever else to basically prove to their, their followers and their clients 
that their pickup methods actually work, plain and simple. They want to prove with video evidence that their pickup methods work. First of all, and I wrote an article in the Negro Manosphere. I'll probably include that too. I want to distinguish between the two because a lot of people tend to throw pickup artists and dating coaches kind of in the same category. They almost use those terms interchangeably. They, they, they do have some similarities at times, but they're also very different. What's the difference between a pickup artist and a dating coach? A pickup artist is someone <clears throat> who specifically teaches you how to connect with a woman for casual sex in a very short period of time, usually less than 24 hours. I would say at maximum within a week. That's a pickup artist. So if your main thing is teaching men, your male clients, how to create sexual chemistry with a woman within the first 24 hours after you meet them, and I'd say at the latest within a week after you meet them, that would constitute a pickup artist. Like pickup artists, their main thing is showing off that they can meet a woman at say a nightclub on a Friday night and get her to come back to his place that same Friday night or to get her to invite him to her place that same Friday night. That's that's a pickup artist. So when, you're, when your main emphasis is on same-day seductions, or if not same-day seductions, having casual sex with women within a short period of time, I would say generally within a week or less, that's the territory of a pickup artist. Whereas a dating coach, which is what I am, a dating coach is someone that's ju just trying to hook, uh, help men connect with women romantically or sexually. It could be for a long-term boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, or it could be for casual sex. And the time is not really a major issue. So like for my clients, I don't care if they hook up with a woman within a week after they meet them, within two weeks after they meet them, within three weeks after they meet them. I don't really care. Because as I pointed out in my book, I think the possibility of sex, I point this out. Most of the same-day seductions I've had, and I've had quite a few same-day seductions, but most of the same-day seductions I've had, honestly, were not my idea. And I think I want to say I point that out in the possibility of sex. I would say probably rough estimate, I would say probably three-fourths of the same-day seductions I've had with women, it was actually the woman's idea. Yep, it was actually the woman's idea. It was not. The only time I really tend to kind of have a sense of urgency for getting a woman in bed is when I'm out of town traveling. Like if, I, if I'm visiting a city and I know I'm only going to be in that city for, say, five days, then, yeah, obviously time is going to be of the essence. So I might have some degree of a sense of urgency. But as you guys know, see, once you implement impatience or urgency into your desire to get a woman in bed, then you begin to transition into territory known as being thirsty, being thirsty. I don't like to ever present myself as being thirsty to women. That's like an erotic tension killer is being thirsty. So yeah, most of the women I've had same day seductions with, it was actually their idea as opposed to my idea. Um, but yeah, that's the difference between a pickup artist and a dating coach. Pickup artists, they're more time oriented than just a general dating coach. Again, they want to teach their clients that they can get a woman in bed usually by the end of their first conversation. That's what they want to be able to teach, that they can get a woman in bed by the end of their very first conversation within less than... Like I said, within 24 hours or less, or at, or at maximum um, within a week or less. Um, but going back to this this Yahoo group, man, <laughs> man, it, it blew my mind. I, 
man, it blew my mind. As Steve D. Williams said it was going to do, it blew my mind. Um, if you're even halfway familiar with the entertainment industry, you know that any movie that has a high amount of special effects in it, they use what's known as a green screen. A green screen. Like a lot of the superhero movies you see, a lot of movies that involve like monsters or aliens or that type of thing, and just a lot of CGI special effects, they use green screens, man. Like I was just looking at some clips of the filming of Black Panther not too long ago, and I saw that most of the film, most of the scenes that they filmed for that movie were filmed in front of a green screen. Like a lot of that background you saw in Black Panther, that wasn't real. That was from a green screen. That was from a green screen. A lot of that Wakanda footage you saw, that was green screen shit, man. That wasn't real. They weren't actually in front of no shit. They was, <clears throat> Most of the scenes in that movie were filmed in front of a green screen. Like, I'll give you a simple example of how like a TV show might use a green screen. A lot of times you might have a TV show and they want to show that somebody's having a conversation while they're driving. Now, in reality, that would be hard to film. It would be hard to film somebody talking to a passenger while they're driving. That would, that would, be, a, 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 that would be a danger. You can't have a driver be distracted like that. So what do you do? You put a, a car on like a television studio. Like I used, as you know, I used to work at a lot of the movie studios and television studios. I worked at NBC Studios. I worked at 20th Century Fox, Paramount Pictures, Warner Brothers, Sony Columbia. Um, most of the major studios they have all these like uh, individual buildings that are studio buildings, and that's where they 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 shoot. Just about, you know, some their entire show. Like a show that used to be on CBS, Chicago Hope. I used to visit that set quite a bit when I worked on 20th Century Fox. So if you want to film, like say I, I'm, I'm a star on a TV show and they want to film me talking to a, a friend of mine in a car while I'm driving. What they would do is they would have a car on the studio lot. In the car, in, in back of the car, they would put a green screen. And so they would have me acting like I'm driving and talking, driving and talking. And then when they put it all together, they put footage of traffic behind me and they put footage behind me on the, on the green screen that makes it look like I'm actually in traffic when I'm actually not. I mean, I, I mean that's why you have the entertainment industry. Entertainment industry is all about making illusions seem real. <laughs> With the exception of documentaries and movies that focus on biographical figures, most movies, particularly movies that involve special effects and whatnot, are all about making illusions seem real. That's, that's why the entertainment industry is a multi-billion dollar industry, because they make illusions seem real. Like, in the entertainment industry, as you know, they'll make it seem like a total beta male can be a ladies' man overnight. <laughs> they make the illusion seem real. So here's what this 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 pickup artist, this well-known pickup artist, is doing in this in this YouTube group. I mean, in YouTube group, Yahoo group. He was using a green screen, and boy, did he use it well. I had to give it to this guy. This is what he did. He was teaching other pickup artists how to incorporate green screen filmmaking technology to create an infill video. And he said, first step, you hire a couple of actresses, one or more actresses. You, you give them a script. You know, you, you let them know how the scene is going to go down. Then you go to like, like a private studio and you either purchased a green screen yourself or you go to a studio where they already have one that they can provide for you. And like he had one scene where it looked like he was in a bookstore. 
But when he was talking to the actress, he was just in front of a green screen. But it was amazing, man. Once he put it together, once he, you know, edited the footage and put it in the background and made it look like he was in a bookstore, man, I ain't gonna lie. It literally looked like he was in a bookstore. It literally looked like he was in the aisle, standing at the end of an aisle of a bookstore. But it was totally green screen footage. He had another one where it looked like he had met this woman on the street. But in actuality, he was in a studio in front of a green screen. Man, I'm going to tell y'all something. For those of you who have bugged me to do infield videos, y'all lucky I'm not a sleazy, shady, snake oil salesman type motherfucker. Y'all lucky I'm not a sleazy, unethical, shady, green... Uh, Snake oil salesman type motherfucker. Because with the, the knowledge I have of filmmaking <clears throat> and the connections I still have in the entertainment industry, man, I could use green, street, green screen technology to make infill videos that would blow every, every other pickup artist and dating coach on planet Earth away if I was a shady motherfucker. I could have, by now, I could have made some infill videos that might have had the potential to make me a millionaire. And I'm not even joking. I could have created some fake infill videos that would have blown anybody in the attraction and seduction community away. Because again, before I became a dating coach, that's the industry I was in, man, was the entertainment industry. I know everything there is to know about filmmaking. Especially if you're talking about low-budget filmmaking. I know everything there is to know about low-budget filmmaking. Um, so, so, yeah, that's number one. A lot of infill videos that these pickup artists produce and some dating coaches and seduction gurus and other types produce, they're fake. They're fake, okay? Those are hired actresses. Those are actresses. Those are actresses. Um, here's what's even deeper, and this is where I'm going to go back to Justin Wayne. Even some of the infill videos that are not fake or fabricated, they're either illegal, or if not illegal, at minimum, they're highly unethical. They're either illegal or they're highly unethical. Why? Here's the deal, man. And most of you all should know this, but I'm sure a percentage of you all don't know this. And again, I worked in media, I worked in the entertainment industry, I know this. You can't record people, you cannot record private conversations and then turn around and play those private conversations to the general public without that person's permission. Can't do that. Can't do that. In most cases, it's, it's illegal, and in the few cases where it's not illegal, it, at minimum, is extremely unethical. Can't do that, man. You cannot record private telephone conversations or record people on video without their knowledge and then play that shit back for the general public, particularly if you're working for uh, a commercial entity. In other words, you're trying to make money off of that audio clip or that video clip. That's when it definitely becomes illegal. You can't record people, man. You can't you can't record people, man, without their knowledge. You can't do that. It, when you record somebody and you have intentions of playing that either that audio recording or that video for the general public, you have to get the person who was included in that audio or video you either have to get their permission before you record them or you have to have them sign a waiver after you record them. One of the two. You have to either get their permission before you record them or after you finish recording them, you have to get them to sign what's known as a waiver. A waiver. Otherwise, man, that person can sue the shit out of you. Yes. That person can sue the shit out of you. 
Matter of fact, I was tempted to sue somebody in this regard at least one time. I had somebody, I'm not going to say the name. This is somebody who's fairly well known in the manosphere and on YouTube. I had somebody re once in 2010 record a telephone conversation I had with him without my knowledge. He was recording me. And then when he and I fell out, he played excerpts of this telephone, private telephone conversation for, for the guys on a particular message board. And I told him at the time, man, I said, dude, I don't know if you realize I could sue you right now. I could sue the fuck out of you right now. And to this person's credit, he did apologize for that. He actually apologized profusely for doing that. So I want to point that out. This person did apologize. But, yeah, man, you can't do that. <laughs> you cannot record people's private conversations and then play it for the general public. That's actually a suable offense. There's a, are some of you guys familiar with a, a, a guy by the name of Edward Snowden? If you're not familiar, Google his name, Edward Snowden. One of the reasons why Edward Snowden came under controversy is because he was working for the NSA. And if you keep up with your United States government, you'll know that the government has had some controversies related to this issue. See, there have been factions of the government that want the freedom to be able to tap people's phones and basically have surveillance on people whenever they want to. And there's been other factions of society that have said, that's an invasion of people's privacy. That's why in most cases, even federal agencies, they have to get like a court subpoena or not a subpoena. What's the, I forget the term for it, but they have to get permission from a federal court before they can do surveillance. Matter of fact, I've been watching Homeland on, uh, on Showtime. I don't know if anybody's fans of the show Homeland. They had, they reset an episode where they were doing surveillance surveillance on someone but they didn't have a federal court order to do that and the character named Saul he was telling Carrie who's the main character of the show he said wait a minute you had him under surveillance without without federal permission he was basically like do you know how many years you can spend in prison for doing that shit and see that's what Edward Snowden what got him in the thick of controversy he was working for the NSA and found out that the NSA was recording people's private lives, sometimes through their the the uh, camera on their the camera on their um, laptop. I never knew that until just a few years ago. Do you know that the government, if they wanted to say spy on you, you know, if if you own a laptop that has a built-in webcam. The government knows how to use that, that camera on your webcam to spy on your ass. Yes, I didn't know that shit. But that's what that's one of the things Edward Snowden exposed. He said, yeah, man, the NSA, they know how to take the, 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 the camera on your laptop and use it to basically record you either just audio or audio and video or just video. So, yeah, man, that, that's, that's illegal, man. In most, in, in most cases, again, there's some exceptions here and there, but in most cases, man, you cannot record people on audio or video and then play it for the general public without their permission, man. Anyway, now I'm getting to Justin Wayne. And I'm not telling anything I didn't discuss with him during my two interviews with him. So, you know, most of the stuff I'm going to talk about to do with Justin Wayne is public knowledge. So it's not like I'm exposing something that wasn't public knowledge. See, Justin Wayne got into trouble, man, because he was sneaking and recording women, him seducing women, even to the point where he would have camera footage of him taking the woman into his bedroom and fucking them. And 
the first thing that happened around the time when I interviewed him on Blog Talk Radio is he had put up a video of a woman and implied that he fucked her when in actuality he didn't. But he kind of implied that he did. And she found out about the video and her father was like a very high ranking attorney in New York City. And her father was going to sue the shit out of Justin Wayne to the point where Justin Wayne left the country. <clears throat> he left the country for a few months. Yeah, he shut down his business and everything. And I want to say it was right after that, that, that incident. That's when I had him on my blog talk radio show to interview him to talk about that. The second thing he was in trouble for was one of the ways he was getting women in bed. And you know how I feel about lying to women. Now, normally I criticize men for lying to women about wanting to be their future boyfriend, uh, their next boyfriend or future husband. The lie Justin Wayne was telling women to get in bed was not that he wanted to be their, their long-term boyfriend or future husband, but he was telling women that he was a, a, a music video producer. And if they had sex with him, he would end up helping them improve their career as like a, a video model or something. And, but then of course, after he fucked him, he'd be like, well, actually I can't help you. <laughs> uh, Justin, you know, that's fucked up, man. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Justin, you know that shit. Yeah, man. Cause I had a bunch of women, man, write me emails after I interviewed him on blog talk radio saying that that's how he got them in bed. Um, so, So yeah, man, so this video that I'm include in the comment section exposes that I guess Justin Wayne still be doing this, man. He's been doing these infield videos and putting them on his website, putting them on YouTube, actually. He was putting videos on YouTube of him getting various women in bed, but these women didn't know about it. These women that he was getting in bed, they didn't know they were being filmed. See... Remember I talked about, I did a video where I talked about how fucked up it is to be indiscreet. See, that, that's what you call being indiscreet, man. What woman wants herself filmed being fucked by a guy that she just met the same day? Raise your hand in the, in, in the comment section. What woman do you know in her right mind that would want herself on video Having sex with a guy that she met that same day, unless she's just, you know, I, I was going to say unless she's a prostitute or a call girl, but even most prostitutes or call girls and erotic escorts wouldn't want that shit. They don't want that shit on video without their permission. And you guys wonder... You know, again, I've had guys bug me ever since like 2009, 2010. Ella, man, I think you would improve your business, man, if you did some infield videos. How come you don't have any infield videos? My simple answer, Justin Wayne. <laughs> Justin Wayne is my simple answer. Why I don't do infield videos? And plus, the, the my style is not conducive to infield videos. My style is not conducive to infield videos. And what I mean by that is that, see, the way a lot of my seductions have worked with women is that I'll meet a woman, I'll be more one with them, then they like, a lot of them go to fuck off on me, <laughs> don't talk to me for like two days, and then they call me like, you know, three days later and basically say, okay, yeah, I want to give you some pussy. I mean, how can I put that on video? That, that would, That's not conducive to video. That's not conducive to video. So anyway, I'm not going to make this long, uh, even though this is already longer than I wanted it to be. But yeah, man, here's the recap, man, on infield videos. The one, most of the ones that are not illegal are fake. <laughs> most of the ones that are not illegal are fake. And most of the infield videos that are not fake are either both illegal and unethical, or at minimum, they're just 
highly unethical and indiscreet. I mean, think about it as a man. Let's say a woman was a coach for teaching other women how to be a gold digger and how to get men to treat you to free meals. And let's say you went out with this woman and she said, yeah, I'm going to show this video of this guy who, who took me out on a date. And he paid for my meal at a five-star restaurant. And let's say she might fuzz out your face. There's ways you can fuzz out somebody's face or put one of those black rectangles on your eyes so that people don't immediately recognize you. Man, come on. People still going to know it's you. Trust me. I had that done before for a TV commercial. I remember when I did this TV commercial that played in the Indianapolis area when I used to do when I when I was in acting. And they had this one commercial where they had this black bar on my face. But everybody still knew it was me. Everybody still knows me. It was actually a fucked up commercial. It was for a matchmaking service. And it said, Jay, how fucked up is this? It said, do you, ladies, do you want to meet a guy who's nice and a gentleman instead of slick talking womanizers like this? And then they showed my picture. <laughs> they didn't even tell me that before the commercial was filmed. They just asked my permission to use my headshot, what's known as an actor's headshot. They asked my talent agency for permission to use my, my picture. And my talent agency said, oh, sure, you can use Alan Roger Curry's picture. Well, guess what they did with it in the commercial? They said, again, they said, do you, ladies, do you want to meet a nice, you know, polite gentleman type of guy? A guy that's like, you know, would make a quality boyfriend instead of slick, smooth-talking womanizers? like this and then they showed my picture only they had this black rectangle on my eyes as if people don't know my other facial features but anyway my point was you guys wouldn't want to be included in a in some manipulative materialistic woman's video without your permission you would be pissed off if you saw yourself in a video on youtube getting played and manipulated on video you would already be pissed off that you just got played and manipulated, period. But that you got played and manipulated on video? <laughs> on a hidden camera? As you saw on my Patreon page, I've done um, interviews with women, on-camera interviews. I have that right now on my Patreon page. I have some, you know, but those women, of course, they knew I was recording them for the general public. So it wasn't nothing sneaky or hidden about it. You ain't gonna never see me do no anything involving a hidden camera or a hidden microphone. I don't do shit like that. And I never will. All right. Later. Yes, sir. Say it again. Yes, sir. Who's the king? Alan, you're the king. Say it again. Alan, you're the king. <laughs> You're dominating me. Say it again. Alan, you're dominating me right now. Mode one. Mode one. Daddy, can I go, please? You're the king. Say it again. Oh, my king. Oh, you're the fucking king. Yes. 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 Oh. Oh. You're the king, Alan. A.K.A. The king of verbal seduction. You know, it's the tone of your voice. How seductive your intonations are. The vibrations that you could just reach out over the phone lines and stroke a woman's breast just by the sound of your voice. How you could make her pussy so wet just by the sound of your voice. That's actually very hot. So you said my show was what? I said your show is powerful. Oh, say it again. Your show is powerful. I bet the king would fuck me really good. Oh, yeah. Who's the king? Alan Roger Curry. Oh, yeah. Who's the king? Alan Roger Curry. The king. The king. The king.